In short, I can say that the guide, Andrew, was wonderful. The assistant guide, Justo, was great. The cook, Faustin, was fun and prepared amazing food given the terrain and arduous circumstances. Our first glimpse of Kilimanjaro. We are going to climb that mountain next Saturday. Woo! Kilimanjaro, here we come. Look at that. Woo! again from Travels with Lobo and Barbara. Join my friend Cornelia and me as we continue our trek up Mount Kilimanjaro for day two along the Machami route, hopefully leading us to the Uhuru Peak up there on the sixth day. In the last blog on day one, we walked a relatively easy 10.7 kilometers in five to six hours, climbing about 1,200 meters in altitude through the montane or rainforest to the Machami camp. On this day, we reached Shira Camp 2 at an elevation of 3,847 meters that sits on the eastern edge of the Shira Plateau. It's the first camp where we could have felt some altitude sickness, but I'm glad to say that at this stage, we still felt perfectly fine. This camp also provides stunning views across the Kilimanjaro Valley that was only partly visible on this day due to lots of clouds and fog. So how did I feel on day two? Well, certainly exhilarated and pumped to be on this legendary trek, but at the same time, as you can hear on the video, my breathing is getting heavier. Stay tuned. The climb was getting tougher. Join me again in this blog after the photos and videos as I answer the question. Considering the name of the blog, two cougars, 12 men, seven days, why are there so many other people on Mount Kilimanjaro? See you later. Good morning, Cornelia. Good morning, Barbara. <laughs> Day two begins. Oh yes, less only a few kilometers to cover today, but uh, the same number of hours, six to seven, because it's a steeper climb. Mm -hmm. oh. This is breakfast time. Mm -hmm. Porridge, fruit, tea, look, Nutella, <laughs> jam. Mm -hmm. Peanut butter. Uh -huh. 
And honey. Oh, what a treat. <laughs> So here's a procedure that we have to do every morning and evening Medi to hmm? medical test. Medical <laughs> test to ensure that there is enough oxygen in our blood and our uh, heart rate is measured as well. Mm -hmm. It's a little device that just kind of pinches your finger. Just leave your fingers still, and then it's called buzz oximeter. It's called what? Oximeter. Oximeter. Okay, and then Andrew records Dr. it. Dr. Andrew. Dr. Andrew, <laughs> yes, he records all the statistics and the numbers. <laughs> Making we, sure we're healthy. And we, then we have to complete a little questionnaire. There's little questions like, are we feeling nauseous yeah, or just headaches? Just to see how your bodies are responding to altitude. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Great. Day two begins also with all the porters. Cleaning up the campsite. Tents coming down, gear packed away, and they're ready to. There's our tent on the ground now. Packing things in big bags that they carry on their necks and their heads and their backs. There's one porter ready to go. This is our path for the last two hours. We have four more hours to go. Oh, popular spot to water the flowers in there. It's raining again a little tiny bit, but it rained harder earlier. Some beautiful flowers along our path. This is where we came from. Path came down a little bit and it goes back up again. Maybe it's the last hill, hopefully. So we arrived at our second camp today at about 2.25. That's just uh, about uh, 5 hours and 45 minutes, a little sooner than expected. This is the camp. I don't know the name of it, I have to check. Lots of tents set up. Milling about, we had a nice hot lunch today. And we're gonna go for a short walk with our guide to a higher elevation to acclimatize to that elevation and then come back down. And later we're gonna have dinner about seven and go to bed because we're going to be heading out early tomorrow morning. It's not too long a day, but or maybe it is a longer day. Should be easier than today. It was a really tough, tough climb today. And there we have one of the resident ravens on the campsite. This is our tent orange and gray one and that uh, tent coming up the green one straight ahead the green one is our bathroom tent we have our own private bathroom tent oh yeah there's some clothes drying my sh orange shirt my yellow jacket and where did I put my pants? They were soaking wet. It rained most of today. It was a really tough day. Oh, my pants are, oh yeah, they're just above the jacket, hanging on the branches. Who knows if they'll ever dry out? Everything was really wet today. It's not raining now though. And it would be really nice to have a day without rain. Cornelia is in our tent. She's putting on warmer pants. We're going to have a little walk around the campsite until five o'clock when we go for a walk with her, with her guide. And uh, there's actually some blue sky breaking through, and we can see the, some rocky peaks, which were under fog before. Hello, Nicholas. Yeah. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. We just came up to a point above our camp, 40 meters higher than our camp. Whoa! There's Yusto. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Cornelia. Yes. And in the back yeah. is our goal. Yes. Mount Kilimanjaro. Yes. Peeking okay. through a little bit, you can't quite see After it. A few minutes, I think later can so we can see the tents. Tent city. That's our campground. Tent city, yeah. And we're 40 meters above it. So we're looking at a circle made of rocks mm -hmm. with an H in the middle mm -hmm. for helicopter landing, for rescuing injured or sick people. John. John. John, see my eye, my eyes are. John has read for hours. that four has read for four hours. Okay. Oh, and it's still continuing. Okay. Uh -huh. This is Cornelia giving English lessons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so John has read for four hours. We have walked for Six hours <laughs> yeah. and are continuing tomorrow. <laughs> it's not ended yet. Thanks for sticking around. Now about that question, considering the name of the blog, two cougars, 12 men, seven days, why are there so many people on Mount Kilimanjaro? Firstly, you can only climb Kilimanjaro with an organized trek and along established routes, so you have to go with a tour operator. Secondly, there are many tour operators in Moshi channeling tours arranged by other agencies around the world, so there were several other groups leaving the Machami Gate on the same day we were departing. Groups varied in size from 1 to 15 trekkers, like ourselves. The one lone man was from Chile. He had one guide, one cook, and five porters. We chatted with many of the other trekkers along the route and in the campsites after we arrived each day. We all left Machami Gate the same day and camped at the same campsites each night. So how do you choose an operator? The short answer is lots of online research with sites like TripAdvisor or perhaps a recommendation. My nephew James climbed Mount Kilimanjaro about six years ago. I asked him the name of, of his trek operator and he gave me the contact information for Bryson Heroes Tours. I sent Bryson an email and the rest is history. So did we request a group of two? No, certainly not. It just happened that on the date we chose to start the climb, there were no other trekkers registered with Bryson Heroes Tours. Our trek was in January as high season is January to March and September to October meaning it is not rainy season and there is a more temperate climate than other times of the year. Most trekkers combine Kilimanjaro with a safari as we did. By the way, if you haven't seen our safari videos, just go back four videos and share in our camping adventures with the wildlife in Africa in the Serengeti and Ngorogoro Crater, an unforgettable experience. By the way, the safari was also organized by Bryson Heroes Tours and we had the same cook, Faustine, on the safari as well as the Kilimanjaro climb. In short, I can say that the guide Andrew was wonderful, the assistant guide Justo was great, the cook Faustine was fun and prepared amazing food given the terrain and arduous circumstances, the waiter Nathaniel, the sanitation manager Robert, and all the porters, including Nicholas and Gola, took excellent care of us. They ensured we were safe, comfortable, and they were always friendly and helpful. I'll be dealing with pricing and tips, etc. in the next blog. Thanks again for joining me. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below or send an email. See you next Friday.